Hey everybody. Uh, Eric here from Lapix. Oh man, you all just shoveled. Let's make sure I adjust this right. All right, we're we're back. So Eric here from Lapix. We got another MacBook here for repair. It's a Melon. It's a nice MacBook Air. And uh, obviously we do lots of Melon repairs, uh, especially for MacBooks. If you're interested in that, definitely have all our contact information uh, down in the description below. There, go ahead and check it out if you're interested. Um, let's see. So this is a Melon, and it says the notes say here. Uh, excuse me, man. This is the tire change, man. This been hit me. I'm getting tired earlier. It's gonna be getting darker. Might have to get a light or something. Oh, and I have a hole in my glove. Great. Well, anyways, the notes say here that will only power on when plugged in, and recently it's not powering on at all. So we're gonna go ahead and see. Let's go ahead and pop open at least the bottom cover here. So at least we have that open, and we do see a red dot that's in the middle here. It's a little bit harder to see. It's dark right now. I know. I know. It's. I know it's dark. I should be getting. Melgado light, I know. And it's in the back, but I have to get it. So let's go under the microscope. Let's just skip skip to the fun part, right? So let's go ahead and see. Let's go under the microscope. Uh ooh. Okay, looks nice there. There's a nice big red dot. And what does the red dot mean? So the red dot means that liquid has impacted this area because there was a white dot here before. And the dye gets a little bit yeah, I don't have to play with that. You guys might probably already know these are the water indicator lights, and it's very easy. So it makes my job easier, too. Oh, look. There's corrosion right there, right close to where the red dot was. And if we look around other other places, we can also see that it's around here, too, and around all over this cap. And around all of these caps here. Look at that line. There's like a line just going on there. And then next to this coil here. And then next to this chip up here. This is all on this side, so probably liquid fell from the back side of it. Um, and there's a little bit of the MOSFET there. More coils, lots of places, right? So I probably used it, um, eventually turned off on him, and now it's, oh, it's like, well, the liquid finally took over. The corrosion took over the connections, and it was a little bit too much uh, to handle here. So let's go ahead and at least open it up, and then I'm going to go ahead and check. Here's, I'm going to check the other side of the board too, see what else is being impacted. We can go check the board view and check out to see what, what has been impacted and probably why this is kind of important. A lot of this, this, these little parts here, especially on the caps here, this looks just more like surface stuff. It's very easy. This would be an easy type of cleanup. You see, this is the SMC, this is the management controller, and you can see there's corrosion close to that area. You know there's a problem when it's close to that area for sure. Also around here too. Looks like it's probably one of the bigger hits over here. And there's also a little bit of damage too close to where the ROM chip is. That's not good either. Um, so yeah, this one might be a little bit too much. If we go over here, we see a bunch of areas that got impacted. A lot of them you're going to see too that have the pb 3 b 4 2 G3 hot in them. Um, that's going to be a problem, especially for our power rails there. There's a ROM chip next to it. In the areas here that have been impacted... 3v4 2g3 hot um, a lot of them are pretty much like the very similar to ones like that those are the main ones obviously you focus on cleaning and repairing everything but those are the main ones that probably corrode the most because they're getting hit the hardest there's a main power rail going through it right so let's see what we could do for repair let's get right into it so i guess what we could do is we could start here first this would be a good one to actually start um if we go back to here you can see this is the u7090 pv3 v4 2g3 hot here and that's what we were going to be focusing first. Um, I know since there's so much excessive damage, you probably think, well, why don't you just dip it, right? Dip it in the old side. Yeah, dip, dip, dip. Now, the thing is, if you dip it, what you can be doing is you could see some of this solder. You see even the little bit of solder here, right there? This isn't a good solder. It doesn't look too hot there. Um, what we can do is we can help recreate that, and especially if there's a little bit of damage along some of the pads here we can maybe just clean up we can we can flux it too we can clean up all this little dirt and debris here and then uh, what we can do is uh, flux it a bit try to reestablish the connections and then uh, if we do need to replace it we can replace it otherwise we can uh, dip it especially if we're going to be covering up so there's a lot of liquid just kind of corrosion absolutely everywhere so we want to make sure that at least we clean up the area first right and then if we need to dip it we can dip it then but let's go actually just do this one because this isn't really too bad this is going to be a pretty uh, straightforward uh, type of uh, cleanup here. We're going to be using some alcohol and obviously a Q-tip to get all the dirt debris. And now we're going to be also using some flux and some hot air to reconnect all the damaged solder there, as well as to clean it up a little bit better. A lot of some of the resistors, some of the capacitors there are a little bit 
uh, not too great on the connection there and also uh, the main chip for we're going to be making sure that we actually go a little bit further here and touch it up with the high iron um, with some flux and that's going to make the connection a lot better the legs are going to be stronger uh, corrosion really messes up the connections in that type of way and that's why you need to clean it up as well as do a resolder connection and a worst case scenario you have to do a replacement a full replacement on a chip or you have to clean up or fix uh, pads or create jumpers that's not fun to do as well we're going to be doing the same thing over here um, it's not too bad uh, i'm not going to be going through every single chip individually because that's not going to be actually a fun time and it's going to be kind of boring for you guys but this is going to be a pretty similar thing we're going to be using a hot iron and um, we're going to be touching up a lot of the solder that actually was bad and if you see it even you can tell look at the nice new connection that it makes you can see the silver actually come out a little bit more it's going to be um, connected reconnecting the pad there to it and a hot iron does a great job if you just touch up both sides not too much of a big deal now we're going to be focusing on also um, the U1900, which was close to where the BIOS chip was. The BIOS chip actually wasn't too bad. I know you saw a little bit of corrosion earlier, but it's a very basic cleanup job. So there wasn't really a whole lot to be doing there. It wasn't super fun, just kind of doing what we were doing a little bit before. Um, so, uh, but the chip next to it, which is uh, which has the which is the U1900, and you'll see, actually see um, the the connection actually to the capacitor in the top left corner there got damaged as well. Some of the pads a little bit damaged. Uh, we can't be doing the same thing we did here uh, because you can see it's totally bad. Look at that pad. It's horrible. So we need to actually remove the U1900. Um, we do need to fix the connection on the uh, to connect to where the capacitors be going and also the chip isn't too bad uh, You can see the solder is actually completely gone there or not completely because if it was completely gone Then you have to do a full replacement on the chip But we can see if we dig a little bit here We can actually see part of the connection and uh, that's gonna be enough We can actually just do a resolder and uh, fix the pad there and we're also gonna be doing the pad on the board as well because it's not Damaged enough, you know, so that's great and if it, if it was then you have to make a jumper and you have to see where it's going It's not a fun time at all um, but we'll also be doing the same thing on the top left where the, you see that the pad is completely damaged. The top one was ground and then the bottom one was obviously where the connection is and that's why the, the, the connection had a problem. But we could just resolder the chip actually. You could add it and then um, we'll resolder the pad of the chip and then we can put it back. We're going to be doing the same thing with the capacitor. But it was really interesting how uh, it gave it just enough. And you can always tell if it's usually something's ground, it's not impacted at all by liquid, right, because it's ground. So now we're going to be touching this little uh, pad up. It's going to be just enough where we can touch up a solder and actually get just a little bit of a solder. So it's going to make a connection because once we put in a brand new cap, it's going to be absolutely perfect. We can touch it up with a hot iron. Let's go test it. All right, it's a lot of work. Uh, let's go ahead and connect it. See if it works. Plug everything in. Hopefully it should come up okay. All right, immediately, just like that. Lots of liquid damage, but we we're able to do a fix for it. That was good. Anyways guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video on fixing the pretty bad liquid spill that was on this MacBook Air. If you did, please leave a like. It really does help us a lot. Subscribe for more content. We do lots of liquid spill repairs, data recoveries, lots of cool things on this channel. Go ahead and check it out. Um, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care, guys. Bye.